Thank you guys for joining me in my journey on building this game engine in C++ using the SDL library. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, so this is me trying to build a game engine in C++ with the SDL library. And uh, this is the second video uh, in this row. And um, I said I was actually going to put this out so that you and I could write this code together. But for now, I just want to show you how um, I made some couple of things in this project. Like for example, in this video, I'm going to show you how I build my engine base class. So I have a, you know, a game class, I call it engine. And I want to explain you, I want to give you an overview how I did that. I just want to share this because this could be an inspiration for you and maybe uh, a start point where you could start your own project and you know, with idea on what you want to do. Now this is the result, for those of you who are watching this for the first time, this is the result of uh, the game engine I'm working on right now, um, it's a two dimensional game engine and um, yeah, let's go over and see that uh, engine base class. So I'm going to open uh, my engine .h file, so this is my class, my engine class. Some people call it game, but I chose to call it engine because it sounds great. I like it. So I have a couple of constants defined here, like the width of the windows. So that's clear. I don't have to explain anything about that. We also have this FPS, which is the frame per second. So um, almost all computers today um, have this 60 frame per second uh, refreshing rate. That's why I'm using this. So it could have been 30 or whatever, but you know because I know the computer the most computer use this and my computer actually does use this that's why I also define it as being 60 but you know because the computer is too fast 60 image per second would be too much for our game engine we don't want to use that kind of you know refreshing rate that's too much we want to slow down the processor because we're rendering everything with the processor not with the graphic card and the processor is really powerful in this kind of thing that's why we try we somehow want to slow down the computer by taking one second divide it by the amount of you know by this 60 and we get something like 16 or 17 uh, um, uh, you know second a millisecond millisecond yeah millisecond this is the the delay we want uh, for our processor to be slowed down on so that he don't go too fast that was just you know an idea now this is the engine class itself it has some important public method like the first one is the init I think the name is self-explanatory and um, the you know this method actually has to you know initialize the, the game engine itself like initializing the window the renderer and initialize the map and uh, the texture manager stuff and all that kind of stuff you can imagine and we're coming to the code right in a in a couple of seconds. I'm just explaining right now. We have this clean function with which actually you know clean everything after the game is done and the quit function also which quit the game. We also have uh, those important functions here. So if you guys are familiar with the um, game development jargon, then you probably heard about the game loop. You know, all game, no matter what kind of game you have out there they all have something in common which is the game loop the game loop is simply a loop which is gonna be I'm gonna be showing that in a couple of seconds it's just a loop which is gonna be running forever as long as the player won you know forever as long as the player won yeah and in that game loop game loop we often have this um, this three function right here we have the render the update and the event in our case because we want to also work with the time which is important which is crucial if you want to build a game you also have to build a timing system and that's why we also have this timer right here the render self explanatory I think you, you know what it does update is like for example when the player is running we want to continuously calculate the new position of the player so that we could render it on the new position on the screen the event is just waiting for any keyboard action or mouse event and all that kind of stuff. The timer actually handles the delay and uh, you know all that things about the timing stuff. We're coming to that. We also have this function which is important 
it actually makes sure we, we, we use it to check if the engine is still going on, if it's still running. If not, then we just close the game and come out of this. And yeah, we also have this SDL renderer stuff because this is the guy on which we're gonna be rendering everything on the screen. It's a private member of this class. And we have also the windows, which is here down here. Those are the private members, the windows and the renderer. We also, uh, I also designed this, uh, this class to be a singleton class, like a static class for, you know, which means this class, this class cannot have two instances of it. There is only one. And the way I did this is by defining a static function called instance. And what it does is it check if the instance member here is null, which means zero, whatever, then if it's null, then he will create a new instance, a new uh, a new object of engine. If not, he will simply return the actual instance of it. Which means, no matter why in the code I will reference to this engine, it will always be only one instance. And that's why I wanted I wanted to make this like this because it's more consistent and there is not uh, nothing weird coming out because you create another object and you know that's why I decided to use it like this. Now this was a little bit about this this um, header file, this game engine class. I'm gonna show you my code for all those uh, methods like with the init and clear we start by initializing the SDL and uh, the SDL image. So we initialize the SDL and the SDL image right here. We check if everything was correct. If it was correct then we create our windows with the SDL create windows function. We give the title, the position of the windows, the width and the height. We also want to make sure if the width, if the windows is going to be full screen or not. Now, we check if the windows is null. If yes, we return false, but we also give an error message. SDL actually provide this SDL get error, which lets you know if something went wrong. And they will exactly tell you, maybe you didn't initialize the good uh, flags from the SDL and stuff and all that kind of stuff, but that's the whole idea of it. Now. If the windows was created, then we can create our renderer too. And since um, this class is, you know, a static class, we need to initialize this instance here. If you don't do it, you will never get to this point. The same thing with the start time, which is a static member. It has to be initialized. So we initialize our renderer and create it. And um, yeah, if it if it doesn't work, then we also give an error message. Now I'm coming in the next videos or the next after the next whatever about this texture manager class. We initialize it. What it does is simply he load all our um, uh, PNG files and till sets and stuff and load them in the game so that we could use them. For example, the player, uh, all those images with the player has to be loaded before we start doing anything. And we create the player right here and put it in this position right here, 150 and 300 stuff. And this is the size of that player. And we also have in the, here in the header file, we have this, uh, this vector, which is um, a, a, a list of our object in the game. So we want to have a reference of all of those objects and, you know, so that we could simply render them by, by using the loop right here, as you can see. Now we also initialize the map. And if everything went correctly, then we just return true. Now the render function is sim simple. We render the map. That's clear. And uh, another thing is we we also go through the loop of our game object and render all of them. And we also need every time to clean the screen before pasting, before rendering anything on it, so that the result doesn't, you know, or you're gonna buffer everything on the screen, and we're gonna see like a slow motion of the player, and we don't want that. That's why we clean the screen. We render and we present the renderer. The update function does the same. It go through the list of our object and call the update function for each object. We're gonna be seeing the object class in the next video. And the event class, we also have we have also implement this this input handler class, which simply listen if everything happened and you know just react to that. And the timer is a guy who calculate the delta t the delta time you know this is the time for the initial uh, uh, for the initialization and after everything has been done so 
you calculate if that time has this value right here this delay we've defined with those FPS we want to make sure that time is constant we want to have a constant refreshing rate we don't want you know the computer to be sometime be fast or slow that's why we're using this timer function the clean I think it's clear you clean all the objects and you know close the windows and destroy them from the storage the quit simply set the is running to false and then we could come out of the group of the loop now this is the main loop I've been talking about the game loop as I said all kind of game you can imagine on earth they all have this in common the game loop and it always has this you know this blueprint like we start our game we take the start time in my case here some people don't do it like this I set the start time because I want to know the different the Delta T has to be calculated every time we start the loop to have this time system implemented so now we check for any event if for example the player push on you know on the right keyboard on uh, on the right key on the keyboard then the player has to move forward then we check that event and from that we can update and after we update we can render now the timer just calculate as I said the Delta T so that it could slow down the processor it's important because if we don't slow down the processor then first of all this could burn down the processor because it's gonna get too warm as I said we're using the processor to render everything on the screen and that's mean that's a lot for the processor that's why we need to slow down so that it has time to rest a little bit before doing anything and here we just initialize our, our game engine as I said I didn't need to create an object because it's a static class that's why I just you know call this instance guy if the end object already exists then he will take that instance if it not exists then he will simply create a new one and call the init function for it and that's my game engine base class so guys that's all I wanted to show you in this video and as I said this is not me um, you know doing this video series and show you how to build this this is just um, uh, just to let you know I'm working right now on something and yeah I'm coming with the playlist where we will write all this code and I will explain everything I've done and share the little experience I have in this with you so I also want to mention that guys my channel now has a patreon account so if you guys want to support me it really you know it it really means a lot for me if you guys can go out there and you know give one dollars or one euro or whatever currency you use in your country it really helped me so you know this this is really important and I really enjoy what I'm doing so um, thank you guys for subscribing again and yeah, that's all for now have a nice day or a nice night or whatever ciao